Hello everyone and welcome to the session. In this video we will discuss about Parson window. So Parson window is also commonly called as kernel density estimation. It is a non-parametric technique which is used to estimate the probability density function for a random variable by placing a window also called as kernel at each data point and then use some of the contributions of all these kernels to estimate the density at a given point. So basically different types of window shapes can be used like Gaussian, triangular, uh, hypercube, square, rectangle, triangle etc. Uh, so these are the different kinds of windows that you can use and finally uh, what is done in this approach is you assign weights based upon the chosen kernel function. So these windows are nothing but on to form a window you need to choose any of this kernel function. So the kernel functions can be a Gaussian, rectangle or triangle and for depending upon what your kernel function is you assign weights and then uh, you basically sum up the contributions of all these kernels to estimate the density at a given point. So Parson window basically allows us to un estimate the underlying distribution of a data set based upon a set of observations. Now, uh, since I mentioned here, Parson window is a non-parametric technique. So first you need to understand the difference between parametric and non-parametric. See, uh, there are two types of models in machine learning, parametric and non-parametric. In parametric, we there are no assumptions or maybe very, very few assumptions about what is the kind of data uh, distribution the uh, machine has to learn. So here there is no assumption at all about the data distribution, about the underlying data distribution. And therefore, this method can adapt to complex relationships and, and it's more flexible as compared to the parametric model. And the most common uh, non-parametric supervised learning method is k-nearest neighbor and also decision trees, random forest, uh, sup, uh, support vector machines, neural networks, these are all examples of non-parametric models. So coming to parametric models here it assumes that there is a specific functional form or specific distribution in the data. So this model assumes right this is a kind of distribution you have in the data. So it assumes that this kind the data here is linear the data here is Gaussian it assumes before and therefore based upon that it will uh, summarize the data based upon a set of fixed parameters. Since the distribution is known, it will summarize the data in the form of a fixed size of parameters. And uh, so you exactly know that your model is going to, how your, you know how your model is going to fit into the data. Right? In parametric, you exactly know how your model is going to fit into the data. Whereas in non-parametric, you do not know. So the model has to, has no idea about the data distribution. Uh, and, he and hence this is more suitable for complex relationships and much uh, more flexible as compared to parametric models. Some of the examples of parametric models are logistic regression, LDA that is linear discriminant analysis, perceptron and Nave Bayes algorithms. Now coming to Parson window, where can we use Parson window? So uh, as I already told you Parson window is used whenever you have uh, no idea about the underlying distribution of data or whenever the model is difficult to be uh, or the data is difficult to be modeled parametrically. Uh, therefore, uh, Parson window is able to provide you a more flexible and a non-parametric approach to estimate the probability density function. And hence this method is very good when you are dealing with data that do not have any kind of standard distribution or they have very complex patterns. So basically Parson window is very useful when the data is not following any kind of standard distributions like okay it doesn't say that this is a linear curve, this is a non-linear curve, it doesn't really confirm to that and uh, or maybe the patterns are very complex. Now let's see how the Parson window method works. See uh, basically the first thing is you need to understand what kind of uh, kernel function you need to have for the window. Right. So the kernel function for the window you can uh, choose Gaussian kernel, you can choose hypercube, uh, maybe a two dimensional hypercube, three dimensional hypercube, uh, hypercube and then you have to place this kernel function at each data point in the data set. So then finally you sum up all the contributions of all these kernels in order to estimate the density at a given point. 
So now, uh, since we are talking about window, now the next question comes is what is the width of the window or the bandwidth of the window? Now the bandwidth will actually determine the smoothness of the density which is estimated. If you have a smaller bandwidth in your window, it will have a more detailed and localized estimation. If you have a larger bandwidth, it will give you a smoother estimation. So basically, a uh, Parson window method is a non-parametric approach. It will give you a lot of flexibility and it will give you smooth density estimation. And therefore, this is very useful if you want to detect patterns in your data, if you want to detect structures in your data, or if you want to work on clustering and classification tasks. Now coming to a more mathematical approach of how Parson window uh, works, uh, to keep it very simple, we, we have uh, broken down the mathematical approach into just two steps. First step where I will define the region. Let's say the region I want to define is Rn. So once you define the region, you count how many samples will fall within this region. Okay, so this region Rn is nothing but the window I'm talking about. Okay, so you define the region, you define the window and then find how many samples will actually fall. Then what is the probability that that samples falls into the region? That should be calculated. So that probability can be calculated with this formula P of X is equal to number of samples in the region R divided by total samples. So let's say I have total samples of 200 and let's say 50 samples uh, will fall in in the window so the probability that the sample falls into that region is 50 divided by 200 now once you find the probability of the sample falling into the region now let's make it more generalized so what is the probability of observing k points out of totally n points in a region R okay so for this we will use a binomial distribution where I say the probability of k points k is the number of points that we need to observe. n is the total number of points. So according to binomial distribution, the probability of k points is equal to n and k dot probability of observing the k points dot product of 1 minus p to the power of n minus k. That is the probability of observing the n minus k points. Because p is the probability of observing k points, therefore 1 minus p will be the probability of n minus k points. Now coming to the step 2. Now, in the step 2, we define the window function or the kernel function. In the step 1, we have visualized the region like in step 1. Now, we have to count how many samples will fall within this region and how many are falling outside. So, uh, in order to find how many points are lying inside the region or inside the window and how many outside, we define a function called as a window function, which is denoted by the symbol uh, phi, where... Uh, uh, we say that phi or the window function of u is equal to 1 for uj less than or equal to 1 by 2 where j is 1 up to d and 0 otherwise. So this uh, uh, this window function is applicable for a hypercube which is like this which is of unit length 1 okay, and which is centered at the coordinate system's origin that means here. So basically this function is applicable for a hypercube of length 1. Uh, so what does this mean? So basically the window function will assign a value 1 for all the sample points which lies within 1 by 2 of the edges of the hypercube. Okay, so it will assign value 1 for all the samples which are li lying between within 1 by 2 of all the edges of the hypercube and for rest of the points it will assign 0. Now, this equation, if I want to represent in a more generalized way, let's apply this to hypercube of length hn that is centered as x. This equation which I just told you now, this is for hypercube of length 1. So the same equation now I am changing for length hn which is centered at x and it becomes like this. So basically what is this? Kn is equal to summation of phi, phi is the window function, x minus xi by hn. Okay, where hn is the length of the hypercube. Okay, and x is basically where the hypercube is centered and xi is the data point for which I am de uh, doing the kernel function. And uh, u where u is nothing but x, x minus, this u is nothing but x minus xi by hn. So, to represent the Parson algorithm, in one uh, simple uh, way, let's say that I have n samples in my data. So suppose this is the data uh, which I have x1, x2 up to xn. 
and let's say we are assuming that these samples are identically uh, independent distributions so let's define the region let's say the region is r and let's say the region is covering k samples out of total n samples then the probability density function is as i told you p is equal to k by n right so that is the probability or that number of samples the that lies within a total number of samples right it is k is a number of sam number of uh, samples within one region divided by total number of samples now with respect to volume with respect to volume of the uh, kernel p of x is equal to k by n divided by b where v is the volume of the region r now if i am talking about hypercube if r is a hypercube which is centered at x and h is the length of the hypercube then what would be the volume h square this is for a two dimensional square cube and uh, for a three dimensional hypercube the volume would be h cube okay so this is the volume so now this is our hypercube suppose i have a two dimensional hypercube if the length is small h is the length is h volume is v h square if it is a three dimensional hypercube then the volume is h cube so now the parson window will be like this this is the parson window function where phi is the window function xi minus x by h where h is the length of the hypercube it is 1 if xi k minus xk by h is less than half why why half because we are considering all the points which are within half the uh, length of the hypercube hypercube and zero otherwise so therefore the window here indicates so this basically this indicates whether the samples are inside or not it is 1 for all the samples which are inside and 0 for all the samples are outside so that was the about the uh, algorithm behind parson and this is the final formula for parson probability density estimate k by n divided by v where k is the because the probability of n k samples uh, within a region of totally n samples and v is the volume so that would now become 1 by n summation of because we have to now take the as i told you in parcel dense uh, uh, parson window we calculate the uh, uh, data points uh, we calculate the uh, density at every data point and then we sum it up right so therefore it is a summation right so that's that's why you use the sigma so sigma i is equal to 1 to n 1 by vn where vn is a total volume right and then you have the window function xi minus x by h divided by n okay so this is the final parson probability density estimate where we here we first find the probability density at every point and then we sum it up this way so we can also uh, we need not use hypercube always the window we can we can use any kind of window uh, depending upon the problem it can be a gaussian window it can be a hypercube it can be a rectangular window it can be a two dimensional uh, triangle so depending upon your problem the window can be chosen so basically uh, i would like to conclude that parson window has lot of advantages the first thing is the first advantage is it's non parametric since it is non -para parametric it is not making any kind of assumption about any kind of distribution in your data therefore it can be used for a wide range of applications the second advantage is flexibility since we have the choice of choosing the kernel since we have the choice of choosing the bandwidth right we can design a better uh, uh, window that suits our problem and the data set the third advantage is a smoothness right the resulting density estimation is smooth and continuous since we have the choice of choosing the bandwidth of the window we have the choice of determining how much of smoothness how much of uh, uh, detailing you want in your density estimation and therefore it's very beneficial for pattern recognition and clustering tasks and robustness right since uh, we have the option of choosing the window we have the choice of choosing the kernel function uh, this non parametric approach of parson windows is very less sensitive very has less sensitivity to outliers and noise in the data as compared to parametric methods and therefore it's very robust so that was about uh, parson window any doubts regarding this explanation please write to me in the comment box thank you so much and please subscribe thank you